It was God Only Knows, the a cappella. And I put it on the verse of Good Vibrations, which on the same box that there was an, uh, an instrumental of, and it worked. So, you know, it's, it's probably the devil's work, but I did it, yeah, and it was a lot of fun to do. I was given a little pager to make sure they could reach me if they would need me. Nothing happened for three, four months, and I thought, well, bummer. I, I can tell I've worked on three sessions with him, which was great enough because I was a huge fan. And then I got a call that I should assist uh, one of the guys he likes to mix with um, on a mix for one of his songs. Showed up there. The whole place was in shambles. Uh, nobody had worked there for a couple of weeks, and it was just not set up. And the guy who was supposed to mix didn't know anything about this. So I was all by myself. Prince came in, very nonchalant, stood behind me with a guitar, just strumming a couple of chords, and uh, asked if I had time for him that day. And I went, Boop. no, that week, he said. And then we worked very long, for four years. And uh, it was uh, certainly one of the big times of my life, yes. In uh, uh, Germany, it's not like in the States where you can only do one thing. In the States, I would have been the guy who worked for Prince, meaning I do R&B work or pop work. Here, I can do whatever. In the beginning, there was a problem. People would say, oh, we're a punk band. Mix my album. I'm like, I mix Prince albums. Yeah, but, you know, they figure it kind of rubbed off, so whatever I do will have some purple rainy shine to it. If it's fuck the police or uh, love, love me do, it doesn't matter. Uh, that took some getting used to, but I got over it. <laughs> and they did too. And then it kind of slowed down, but then I, I found a very um, good crowd that booked me on a regular basis. The the biggest one being Moose T, it's a German DJ and producer who works in Hanover, Germany, and um, had two huge hits in the 90s, in Europe at least, one by the name of Horny and one called Sex Bomb, as sung by Tom Jones. And him and his partners have a big studio in Hanover, and he produced a lot of really cool projects that I engineered. So he does his own stuff himself most of the time, but when there was stuff to engineer, he would call me, and it was great. We did some fabulous stuff. We did an el we did stuff with Zucchero, who's very big in Italy. We did uh, stuff for Yvonne Katterfeld, German singer. We did an album for Rochefort. Um, various high-profile remixes for uh, Boney M and the likes, so big uh, pop things. And, you know, the word spreads. And, uh, Hanover became kind of a center. I do a lot of uh, work with the Scorpions these days. With autotune showing up, you could, uh, you could fix it. You could say, it doesn't matter if you're a bit flat, I'll just, I'll just fix that for you. But it always sounded like an effect. And then somebody mentioned Melodyne to me. And what I like about it, I don't like, in the things that I do, I don't like to have a piece of equipment do the thinking for me. And with Autotune, that's what I had to do. With Melodyne, I can do it myself. So, funny enough, I do Melodyne, I love for two things. One, the real detail things, where, I would, where I'm listening to a, a great lead vocal, and I'm just fixing the small pitch things that are just ever so slightly off. And then the completely crass things where I uh, create a new uh, harmony vocal, for example, because it's just so easy to do. And uh, the artifacts are bearable, so I can really use it. And ever since then, I haven't looked back. It certainly took away a lot of worries um, when I'm producing things, when I'm in charge of creative decisions, and say, okay, this is good and this isn't. Because I can say this is, like I said before, this has a great vibe, but it's a bit flat. I don't care. Or uh, somebody says, okay, this... I just had this in a production for a Swiss band. He says, okay, this is all great, except for this one vocal part. It just doesn't carry enough energy for me. So what I do, I take that vocal part and I make a harmony. And it worked fine. And all of a sudden I have creative options that I didn't have before. I don't use Melodyne for... Uh, the time stretching end of things, so I don't, you know, I use it as a plug-in. So it changed my workflow in the way that I usually, before I mix, 
I take the lead vocal and I put it through Melodyne and I listen through it and find the spots that I want to fix. So whereas before, I if I heard something really wrong, then I would think about tuning it. Now I think I'll just check it out and move it a little bit here and there and it'll be fine. Sometimes I try it when I know, uh, when I know the, the lead vocal has a lot of problems, for example. Then I try to select it all and go like uh, jump to the grid. But I never like it as much. I really trust my ears and um, I want to use them. I want to listen to it. I want to see, okay, this doesn't work. Even if this is a bit flat, maybe that's what it needs because the guitar is too. What, by the way, has changed my workflow is as a polyphonic thing. Where, for example, if I have a clean guitar, as there so often is with a bit of uh, detuned D string. And it's a beautiful uh, part picked, everything's wonderful, but that one D string is just kind of pulling it down. And then I can just load the whole thing in and set it to a gentle setting and say, auto tune it for me. Wrong word to use, but <laughs> take it and put it in the, wrong, in the right grid. Um, and then it'll, it won't turn it into a keyboard, but it'll move ever so slightly that it's right. It's not off anymore. And I read that really, really helps. I've taken just for myself, a uh, Beach Boy a cappella that was on a box set of theirs, uh, of a song called, uh, it was God only knows the a cappella. And I put it on the verse of good vibrations, which on the same box that there was an, uh, an instrumental of, and it worked. So, you know, it's, it's probably the devil's work, but I did it. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun to do.